We'll be right back. In 1966, my next guest got together with fellow UCLA student Jim Morrison. They formed The Doors. Uh, they went on to create some of the most distinctive and successful albums in rock music. He has also produced albums for the uh, Los Angeles band X and has himself recorded this album, Carmina Burana. Please welcome Ray Manzarek. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. All right. The folks have been waiting to see you. Uh, let me just at the beginning say that uh, I, I've goofed up and we're r really running late, so let me apologize in advance and invite you to come back uh, uh, so we can have some... Oh, in about two weeks. Okay. In about two weeks. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good enough. There's a, the Kandinsky exhibit at the uh, Guggenheim, if you haven't seen it. It's really a super exhibit. And Dorothy, I want, uh, I'm going to bring you back and we'll come back in two weeks and we'll see the exhibit and we'll come on your show. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Ray, let's start with the, the, your newest effort. Uh, did I pronounce this correctly? Carmina Burana. Carmina Burana. Burana. Right. Now, what is this? Carl Orff. Let's Carl start Orff, with the name. Uh, what is that Carl mean? Orff. Carmina Burana I mean, songs from a Benedictine monastery. Um, these are 12th century erotic poetry, scandalous poetry that uh, these renegade monks said, we're out of the monastery, let me out, let me get out of here, I don't want to... <laughs> God is out there. And uh, they embraced life, uh, drinking in the tavern, licentiousness, making love to women, and all of that stuff, that good stuff that yeah. we all love. And uh, Karl Orff uh, discovered the poems in uh, around 1930. In 1937, he uh, wrote this cantata utilizing uh, these poetry, this poetry from the 12th century, and uh, put it all together into this big orchestral grand Germanic extravaganza, Carmina Burana. What I've done with quite Philip an undertaking Lattis, here, isn't it? Well, why not? You know, yeah. <laughs> I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you uh, about the, another album, the, the newest Doors album, mm -hmm. she, "Alive." She cried. Mm -hmm. Now, how was that put together? Where did that material come from? La, more lost manuscripts. Yeah, almost. Um, what we had were uh, tapes that we made in uh, 68, uh, 69, 1970, while well, Jim was still with us. Made for future release as an no, album? No, uh, it was made as part of an album we released a long time ago called Absolutely Live. Now, these were outtakes, and mm -hmm. we, uh, they got lost. They, got, uh, they just disappeared. I don't know what happened to them. Outtakes being uh, rehearsals or warm-ups that were on tape? Or um, sound checks? Uh, all of it. Sound checks, yeah. uh, various uh, recordings, various versions of the songs. Uh, we had uh, six or seven versions of Life My Fire, as played yeah. so well by Paul and his band. Great version. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the tapes got lost. They were disappeared. Uh, they were gone for six, seven, eight years. We hired a private investigator to get on it. We, uh, we searched everywhere in Los Angeles. And uh, finally, they were discovered in one of the storage facilities, and uh, they had been misfiled. And, uh, just you know, by accident, somebody stumbled upon them? Just by the computer. Them? Right. The computer said, uh, these tapes are here, and they weren't here. Yeah. And then some enterprising guy went and said, listen, uh, there's a stack of tapes 10 feet high. We had 70 boxes of tapes, and it was just this huge stack. Now, of how tapes. is this album selling compared to uh, an album that w when the group was together and, w and working? Actually, it's selling better. This one, uh, Alive, She Cried, is selling better than Absolutely Live, the album we put out when uh, the group was together. From which this came, sort of. Right, yeah, right. So, uh, you know, record sales today are as good as they were in 1968, What, what, year, what year did uh, Jim Morrison die? 1971, July 3rd, 1971. W was there a feeling at the time among you and the, and the other members of the band of, well, maybe we can get us somebody to replace him? Did you... Well, we talked about a lot of singers, sure. We talked about uh, Iggy, Iggy Pop. I think he was on your show, Yes, he was. He? Yeah, we yeah. talked about Iggy. We talked about uh, Van Morrison. We talked about uh, Mick Jagger, but he already had a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about quite a few people, but... Uh, Did you, know, you approach anybody? Uh, not really. Who's going to replace Morrison? Yeah. You know, Morrison, is, uh, Morrison is Morrison. Yeah, no let me, one, no let one me, can replace uh, him. Let me ask you one quick question. Occasionally you read the rumor that this was all a hoax masterminded by Jim and that he's still alive in Europe somewhere <laughs> or in uh, Southern California. Do you subscribe to that at all? Uh, uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Um, I, I don't think I'd better go any further with this, actually. I'll get in trouble. Okay. But uh, Jim, uh, uh, I love you, man. Okay, listen, uh, please come back, Ray. We've got to do a yeah, commercial. Yeah, a lot of things uh, and, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, 
we got to go, folks. Right. Ray, thanks again. All and right, we look Dave. forward yeah. to having you back. Yeah. My thanks also to Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Janet to Brendan Roman. Tomorrow night, Dudley Moore, folks, come back. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.